Hello, hello everybody and welcome to my grow closet. We have here my flowering tent and today is to the day, two weeks since we planted these girls. The giant purple monsters by Welcome to the Grow Tent. Um, G13 by I-49 and Purple Kush. I also got I-49. So what we're gonna be doing today, they are done with their seedling stage. We're gonna be transplanting them into their final home, a five gallon square pot, and planting um, cover crop. Uh, basically lemon basil um, and uh, crimson clover. The lemon basil, um, I think I'll plant cilantro too. I have quite a few different seeds, we'll go through it. And um, basically like the basil, the cilantro, if you plant parsley, any like fragrant um, herb will be a nice um, pest um, deterrent. And our crimson clover will allow added water retention so we could go longer without watering. And it allows us to reuse our soil by it being a nitrogen fixer, meaning after it, um, after it sprouts its flowers is when it's best. Like uh, the crimson clover flower here. They like uh, pop up and then die out. Ooh, got some over there. Now what the, what the uh, crimson clover does is takes nitrogen from the air and stores it in its roots. So after they say the peak time to do it is after they bloom, but then when you kill the plants, basically when we're done harvesting and we're gonna put all the soil back into a bucket, all that nitrogen collected from the air and stored in its roots gets re released back into the soil. We also do um, nutrient recycling where we put a lot of the clippings right back into the soil. We're using um, top dressings and bukashi to help break down the top dressing. Um, build the soils, top dressing, basically just their nutrient crab blend, uh, molasses, and um, for flowering, I put fishbone meal for the added phosphorus. And uh, yeah, so we're just gonna put these girls into uh, their final home. We got two smaller ones, one of the giant purple monsters. Actually, this one's a, no, this one's normal. It's a little short, so. What I'm planning to do when I transplant them is plant them a little lower to be even with that girl there and you know, good start on our canopy. But as you can see, this doesn't have the stretch in in between, maybe I can fix the focus. It, does, it doesn't have the uh, stretch in between the Catalan, whatever, however you pronounce that, the first leaves there, like those leaves. See how there's like a little gap? So this is, gonna be a little bit taller so I'll probably end up planting them a little higher than it. a little higher it's just a little slower to grow that's all all right so we are using a TS 1000 this is not gonna be enough light for 10 plants I know this I'm gonna supplement it with this crappy Chinese light I have up there. The Max Sun. Um, yeah, I have a TSL 2000 in this four by five, and this isn't enough uh, coverage. I know that for this flowering tent. So I'm thinking I wanna get an FC 4800 for here. That'll for, um, completely cover this tent. Uh, also by Mars Hydro and um, that also adds UV light now th this uh, the TS models don't have the uh, UV light what I heard online is that UV light helps and mainly in the flowering stage for terpene production and supposedly your plants get a lot frostier we'll see that um, once I get these lights I had to order them well I had to save for them so I'm thinking the 4800 will go in here, the FC 4800 will go in here, and then I'll move the TSL 2000 
out here. And since it's a longer one, it'll cover hopefully this. And then I'll, hopefully that'll be enough light for 10 plants. But um, yeah, I just do not have the money to do that yet. Hopefully within the month. And of course we do a video of that. Okay, we are using Fox Farm. Jeez, what's going on? We are using, there we go. We are using Fox Farm Ocean Forest. Oh, we're using, a, so these are five gallon Vivosun. I think these are Vivosun, yeah. Vivosun square pots, five gallon. It looks a little smaller, to be honest. These were a pain in the ass to find. And I got so overcharged. It is so hard to find square saucers. Um, online they say you can go with a turkey, um, like uh, an aluminum foil tray and do it like that. But all the ones I found were like rectangular. Even the, the ones, the square ones, the cake pans, um, basically just eight by eight. Biggest I saw was like nine and a half by nine and a half. This is a 14, I think at the top. Yeah, 14 at the top. It's a little smaller at the base, which is fine. Fits perfectly in it. There we go. Okay. So I got my Fox Farm Ocean Forest down there. And uh, let's go. Here I am with my um, little bin here. Um, any plants that had failed or um, any of the used soil that I have, I, you know, Fox Farm soil that I have. I also start, I also tried, when I first got into it, I, st I started using a Cocorado and a Nature's Living Soil. So that's also a mix in here as well. And I'm only going to be using um, Ocean Forest from this point on. And we're just going to be, um, yeah, using this bin, the dirt that's in it, and the, the bags of Fox Farm. I'm going to be bringing this bin upstairs to outside of my balcony, where it can't be reached by, let's say, an ant farm or something. And, um, yeah. And we'll just keep it up there. And anytime we're done with harvest, we'll dump the dirt in there, mix it up and then you know move our plants to the flower room and then replant more plants and uh since the crimson clover is on the bottom since we flipped them upside down into the bin they're dead and released all their nitrogen back into the soil so yeah so i'm just mixing it up a little bit here and um let's fill up these pots I do want to say something really quick about these uh, square pots. Um, they don't really stay square. You have to kind of pat them on the sides type of thing. Oh, here's a, um, a root from the, uh, the male that I cut as the base. Um, I end up putting that in the bottom of one of the pots just so it can break down over time. Doesn't hurt anything. It's dead. So anyway, oh, about these pots. Um, so you can get like bamboo stakes and there's like things on the corner where you can put the, uh, see I put the thing on the bottom, the root bone. Okay, so you can put stakes on the side and that gives it some rigidity, you know, to hold its shape a little bit, but it's still gonna be bulging out the sides. I mean, you, you can pat the sides to get it, get it as square as possible. 
But in my opinion, if you're gonna, if you're doing it to try to fit more plants, that's why I ended up buying it. Your pot can't go bigger than your saucer, so really you should more be trying to get square saucers than the square pots. So yeah, I mean it looks cool if you try to pat them on the sides, try to get them all looking square, but you know, it is what it is. Alright, just wanted to throw that in there. Okay, now that we have all the pots filled up, we're just going to take um, any leftover soil and just top them off. Um, since the soil does compact when watering, um, we don't overflow our pots, but we get them pretty close. And um, as you'll see by the end of the video, they do drop down. So, um, yeah, so here's me topping them off. done filling up our pots with our ocean floor soil and of course in our garden we want to keep a, um, a clean workspace especially that we're going to be bringing these pots indoors so what I'm doing is I'm spraying them down mainly on the sides and that'll get all the, uh, the dirt off of the, uh, the sides of the pot so we're not tracking dirt into our grow space and we are, you know, just being as clean as possible. And now I'm just doing a, um, a light showering basically just watering the pots um, the soil was moist already so it doesn't need a lot of water and uh, yeah that'll be uh, it for the watering for a while and I'm just going to uh, finish cleaning up and keep on watching so um, I do add earthworms to my soil um, this helps uh, break down the top dressing a lot quicker and earthworms actually move the uh, nutrients from the top closer to the bottom. So what I'm doing here is I'm just grab, I'm going to my uh, vertical composter here and um, just grabbing, um, I only put two worms per pot so yeah. They provide a lot of benefits. They aerate the soil with their tunnels, providing oxygen to the roots. Um, again, they break down that top dressing really well. And since I do top dress a lot, they help bring those nutrients down to the bottom. And it's just earthworm castings of fertilizer that we would have added to our soil anyway, being directly added to our soil. So yeah, so uh, that's part of my uh, thing that I do. So. Here's that. All right, we got a little bit of a workout there, going up and down the stairs, bringing these girls up. Well, bringing these pots up, they're empty right now. So we got 10 of them, and we're gonna fit it into this space here. Damn, man, I definitely, obviously need another light. I'm gonna use that Maxi Sun as a supplement until I can, I, I'll replace this with the FC 4800 and then move 
that light out here and that'll sh have that lit up. That's my plan. But for now, I'm gonna have to make do since I do have these 10 girls I have to deal with. So, yeah. First things first I'm gonna do. In each pot, I'm going to put one tablespoon of Bukasi. And um, I'm gonna do this basically to inoculate the soil, to put the beneficial bacteria that's in here into the soil. Now, the reason I do this is one, it helps break down um, the organic matter in the soil quicker. That's why we add it to our top dress and um yeah and since i do nutrient recycling basically a lot of the defoliation i do goes back into the pot this will also help that out and this is just i'm only putting one tablespoon this is just to get them you know started in the pot that's all just to uh introduce them also bukashi is an anaerobic compo composting um material so Let's say we overwater and there's a lot, lack of oxygen. These beneficial bacteria will at least compete with the baddies that, um, that thrive in anaerobic um, environments. So that'll help us as well. I'm pretty sure there's some nitrogen in here as well. However, we're using Fox Farm Ocean Forest, so we're not going to be doing a first top dress until after one month. That's how much nutrients are in these, uh, are in these pots. In these pots. So, yeah, just like that. Not a lot, and you mix it in. That's all. Very easy. Now, early in the video, I showed how I cleaned off these pots with the hose and basically wet them down. Um, so when I transplant these, um, I'm not going to water since there's already water in the soil. Overwatering again is like the, the public enemy number one for cannabis, <clears throat> for cannabis growers. All right. All right. You want to do this with as minimal airflow as possible. I mean, these might as well be uh, not square. These might as well be circle pots because they kind of just morph into circles. But um, we're going to shape it a little better. I'm pretty sure I'm supposed to be putting stakes like um, sticks in these things to hold the form and I guess to help with the that'll help with low stress training however I am not doing that so we're just gonna like pat them after my hands aren't so dirty so we're gonna do that with the other ones okay pretty easy right and we're just gonna mix it in on the top Now, obviously, you don't need um, to do this. Um, a lot of people don't. But I find it helps me in my garden. Of course, you watch YouTube videos and you take what you can from everything. Use what's logical to you or what makes sense to you in your garden and your space. You know, everyone grows differently. This is a. Uh, complete organic grow I don't use any pesticides nothing um, I ordered nematodes they should be in tomorrow because uh, I think I have root aphids in in that tent um, I mean I'm not sure I do have a microscope I guess I could just like do it check it that way but I'm I'm pretty sure so uh, yeah the nematodes will be here tomorrow and we're gonna treat the flower tent with the nematodes I don't think I'll have, I don't think I ordered enough for these here that I have my hand in. Um, So 
this is what we got. We got the uh, Mars Hydro TS-1000, and we got my first light ever, the Maxisun 600W. Um, this is without the reflector. And as soon as I get the FC4800 in here, then that will move out here, and I could probably retire this girl. This one is uh, old school, huh? I haven't seen Blurple in a while. All right, so um, I'm actually worried about the strength. And we'll see how the girls react to the new light. Um, this has been on 50%. This doesn't have a switch. It doesn't even have a bloom or a red switch. It says it's throughout the whole stage. This is supposed, so this is 134 true watts, 134, all right. I believe this is supposed to be 300, but I don't have a, uh, a meter to, to measure from the wall. That will be coming soon. Okay, so uh, now that we have our light set up, let's actually get to what we were doing. You know, you wanna make sure we had the proper setup before moving forward. This is an ideal. The lighting situation is not ideal. This fan, oh, let me show you. So I ran out of ratchet ropes because I needed four for this to get it placed right. You look how the shelves are. I have nothing to hang from the ceiling. So I have four ropes going four different directions to get it um, evenly over here. This. I used a trellis net. <laughs> I ran out of ratchet rope, so I tied the trellis net over, and to position it better, I used, um, I forgot what these are called, the hang straps for like your inline fan, just to move it exactly where I wanted it. So, we'll see how that works out. With the, with the, the Mars Hydro, now that we are officially in veg, I'm going to be day by day, probably like every two, three days, not today. They're getting enough stress getting transplanted. It's gonna end up at 75%. It'll take about a month. You know, very little every couple days. And then we'll have these girls at 75%. And then we do the same thing in flower from 75 to 100. Okay, so let's do it. So let's grab our little uh, crimson clover. We have our girls hanging out over there. This fan is no longer going to be able to oscillate because of the um, trellis net in the way. Let's see what that looks like. It's not really good to the wall. Oh. And I'll just keep it like that. And I'll get another fan down here to blow this way. We have a air purifier, it's UV, kills anything in the air, which is good because I'm growing mushrooms in there. Check out my other videos. All right, so what we came here for. This, I'm a little worried about being too close. We'll do the measurements and check it out. But, um, oof. oof, already dropping making a mess now um, I haven't watered these girls today and I'm not going to the last time I watered them was yesterday morning because I knew I was doing the transplant today so these are hopefully a little dried out and if you remember we watered these we cleaned them off with water so these are moist that's gonna cause the roots to go outwards you know they're chasing the water their medium is dry this is moist it's gonna go chasing after it right and then, uh, yeah okay so I'm gonna put one of each plant underneath this because I want to see I want to see what happens yeah. what we're gonna do is we're gonna transplant to the side of the pot across from a handle and that'll help us with low stress training so we're just gonna take this and make a hole 
this is the soil it's gonna this is the space it's gonna be displacing right you don't want to make a mess giant purple monster Start it from the handle. I guess we start it from this handle and move across. Yeah, yeah, purple Kush, giant purple monster in 313. We'll do another G13 right at the handle. a little deeper so the soil supports its stem especially if your plant has a little bit of a stretch right. another G13 in the pot I was gonna say in the bag but in the box This one. So I have the tripod balanced on my knee. That easy. I'm gonna show you one more and then I'm gonna have to do it without the camera just so I'm not doing this for hours. Let's see if I can. Over here, so make sure it's deep enough. It's the only transplant they're going to be getting throughout their entire life. Alright everybody, and we're back. I got all the girls planted here. This is the tallest one. I should have planted her a little deeper. Alright, looking good. Make sure your soil is even. No little like air gaps. Now these are supposed to be square pots, so I guess this is the point where you should start shaping it. I feel like maybe I didn't need square pots. <laughs> really what I needed was the square saucers, and that's how I'm utilizing the most space. Because really, look, it doesn't matter if it's circular or square if I'm if I'm using a soil um, a saucer, right? It doesn't really matter because the footprint's only as big as the saucer. Your pot's not gonna be bigger than the saucer, right? No matter if it's square or circle. But, you know, whatever. We tried it. Um, okay, so we're gonna be using Crimson Clover, Nitrogen Fixa, and we have a bag of seeds here. Let's see, milk thistle. So, crimson clover, lemon basil, regular basil, um, cilantro, and flat leaf parsley. Now, bugs hate the smell of these plants, and, you know, hopefully it'll, a bug will come in contact in it, contact to it, be like, damn, this place sucks. Fly or get away. 
and try to look for a better spot without these plants and it'll go into either our traps. I'm gonna put more down in between here. And they just hate it. it just makes what we want to do is make an environment that's extremely comfortable for the plants, but at the same time make it as hostile for pests. And we are gonna be adding nematodes, but um those come in tomorrow, but I won't even be adding it to this. I'll be adding it to my flower room. And then um, in a couple, you know, when I buy it again, which hopefully will be this month, after I buy the, uh, the light is priority. But after I buy that, then I'll buy more nematodes. Okay, but for now, what we're gonna be doing is sprinkling a little bit of each on each pot, a little bit of each. Not a lot. So we're just gonna so hard. everything's so hard to do with one hand. Just that much lemon basil, and we're just gonna. Eh. All right. It's gotta be an easier way. Oh, tripod, tripod. Maybe about two inches from the plant, then I automatically pick it. Because you don't want any plants um, competing with your um, with your plants, right? This is the most important thing we're growing here. This is the reason we have this. So you don't want anything competing with it. So anything that'll pop up within two inches, I completely uh, rip off, take out, you know? Just so that they don't compete. Cilantro, I'm only gonna do three or four seeds each. All right. So those are the uh, the, the pest management plants are planted, right? I'm a, kind of uh, don't want to do, I already put it in, what can I do, the flat leaf parsley. I keep forgetting it's not regular parsley, it grows really tall, so if it comes up I end up cutting it, cutting it down. So that's all the pest management plants in there, and now the nitrogen fixer. It's going to be used, um, not only a nitrogen fixer so we can reuse our soil, it's uh, going to be used as a mulch so we can... Um, Less light is hitting the soil directly, so there's less um, water loss to evaporation, and uh, basically just greater water retention. That's all. Simple as that. Yeah. Now, when these sprout, it's gonna push the soil up. And um, I feel that helps aerate it. Ugh. I don't like this light at all. This is the perfect footprint for the TSL 2000 that I have in my um, flower tent. And this is the perfect footprint for the TS 1000. Uh, probably do the 3000 a little better on this. But yeah. So if I could get the, the other light in there and move that one out and retire that one, I'll be a happy man. But yeah, this isn't a lighting episode. So let's finish doing this. Now I'm not, I'm trying, I'm not gonna plant anything behind it, behind the plant. It's pretty much only from like here to here. Because I don't want anything within two inches. 
this is about two inches away. So you know, if anything sprouts, we we'll just pull it. See if you're gonna get a little close. What are you gonna do? And and this is the main reason we even transplanted this early, because you want to give time for these for the for all these um for the companion planting for the cover crops to mature and actually work. You know, if you just have microgreens growing and they, they, they don't even hit their flowering stage by the time you're harvesting it, you're not going to be able to return as much nitrogen as you want back into your soil. So you want to give time for it to, uh, to grow and to uh, grab that nitrogen from the air. Now we are going to sow these in. I'm just putting them on top right now. And we're gonna take our fingers and rub them in. Not rub them in, rake them in, I guess. Sew them in, that's what they are. Sew them in, stick it with the word. up the top layer of dirt. If you want to start um, shaping your pot into a square, you can. I, my hands are dirty. I mean, I don't even really want to. It doesn't really matter to me. <clears throat> As I said earlier, the saucer is square. I guess that's all that really matters. And clover sewed in. I think we are about done. Do you agree, ladies? Oh, yeah. So, what I'm gonna do from here on, well, he's vacuum. We gotta vacuum, clean all this up. I'm gonna put some sticky traps down. I have some blue and some yellow. The blue is supposed to attract. You know, drips and uh, drips, <laughs> a whole bunch of things, but mainly I use it for drips. Um, the yellow is for the uh, fungus gnats, and um, those are just meant to see if I have a problem, not to treat the problem, right? Got your hydrometer and your thermometer. This is what it's at. The humidity is a little high because uh, these girls are wet, but this will normally. Yeah, that's generally about what it normally is. So we'll just keep an eye on that. Now, one thing this one's supposed to be at 25% to 50% for seedlings, early veg. I have it at 50, and we're going to be moving it slowly to 75. Now, one thing I do want to say, the most important thing. Now, if your plants aren't getting enough light, they're going to grow more slowly, right? That's okay. If the plants get too much light, they will die. So, you'd rather be a little further away and see how they react and bring it down that way and or then just starting low and absolutely killing them so this was a transplant so i just want to keep an eye on these girls they are going to be stressed out so keeping an eye on them for making sure this light isn't too intense it doesn't have a dimmer or any of that these girls started at 50 percent all of them so coming for a stronger light could be dangerous so i'm going to keep a really sharp eye I don't know if that is from the transplant or from the light. Again, really, we're gonna keep a really, really close eye. Really close. Multiple times a day. The light is so important. 
you know it's if it's too far away whatever you get a little bit of a stretch and they grow slow but if they're too close you will kill them at this age I did that on my last girl I killed one of them by uh, raising the light temp um, dimmer too high so yeah if I'm gonna end the video on any note is if when you're transplanting they're stressed so keep your lights a little dim and have them you you know get used to it <sighs> I'm just worried about this one that's why I'm really you know but we'll see you know uh, every week come out with a new video and that's how we transplant it now we are officially on week one of veg we did week one or two of seedling stage and now we are in week one of veg I do that to add more time to my flowering tent. That two weeks that's in sealing stage covers the time it's drying in there. You'll see, whatever. Anyway, thanks for watching. Um, like, comment, subscribe, and have a great day.